Chapter 8, Lubrication System. Engine heat flows out through hot exhaust gases and in from high temperatures in the cylinder board to cooler temperatures in the cooling fins to control operating temperature. Like other forms of energy, heat is capable of doing work. Heat flows whenever a temperature difference exists in a material. Heat always flows from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature. Heat flow is similar to electron flow when there is a difference of voltage between two points in a circuit. Combustion gas temperatures vary with different events in the operating cycle of an internal combustion engine. During the operating cycle of an internal combustion engine, combustion gas temperature varies greatly in a short period of time. Combustion gas temperature is typically lowest toward the end of the intake event. During the compression event, the temperature increases from the compression of the air and fuel molecules. The combustion gas temperature increases until it peaks soon after ignition. The combustion gas temperature decreases during the power and exhaust events. A rapid temperature decrease occurs as the intake valve opens to allow cool air-fuel mixture into the combustion chamber. Heat from the combustion chamber is transferred to the airstream as it flows between the cooling fins or through a radiator. Thermal conductivity is the ability of a material to conduct and transfer heat. Aluminum has one of the highest rates of thermal conductivity of all common metals. The rate of thermal conductivity for a cast iron is considerably lower. Thermal conductivity allows heat to transfer through a mass to the area of lowest temperature. On an air-cooled engine, the area of lowest temperature is the cooling fins. On a liquid-cooled engine, the area of lowest temperature is the radiator fins. Thermal growth increases the size of a material in all directions with little or no change back to original dimensions when heat is removed. Thermal growth is the increase in size of a material when heated with little or no change back to original dimensions. Even when subjected to extreme cold, a material that has experienced thermal growth cannot return to its original dimensions. Thermal growth occurs in all directions. Temperature variation in engine components is a primary cause of thermal distortion. Thermal distortion primarily affects the operation and durability of the cylinder bore and valve seat inserts. When an engine is operating under load, the combustion chamber is the main source of heat in the engine. The cylinder bore is a common place for thermal distortion to occur due to combustion chamber location and component friction. Heat produced during engine operation is commonly localized to specific areas of the cylinder bore combustion chamber, and cylinder head, causing temperature variations. These temperature variations occur regardless of the material. Temperature variations and the structure and design of the cylinder block are the primary causes of thermal distortion. Heat transfer occurs during combustion by conduction from 3000 degrees Fahrenheit in the combustion chamber to 140 degrees Fahrenheit at the cooling fins. Heat transfer through the cylinder wall occurs only by conduction. Although temperatures in the combustion chamber can peak at approximately 3000 degrees Fahrenheit during the first milliseconds of combustion, an overall average temperature range is between 1200 and 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. Cylinder wall temperatures are considerably lower because a thin layer of gasoline adheres to the cylinder wall and acts as an insulator. Heat flows from the combustion chamber through a gasoline and oil film through the cylinder wall to the coolest portion of the block at the cooling fin tips. An air-cooled engine transfer heat by convection as the air circulates around the cylinder block 
and cylinder head. An engine block material transfers its heat by conduction. Cooling air circulating around the cylinder block and cylinder head transfers heat by convection. As air passes the engine block and components, it, pick up, it picks up heat and the atoms and molecules in the air begin to move faster. When the air enters the atmosphere, it releases the heat. Heat is also removed from the engine by exhaust gaskets, gases, radiant heat emitted from engine components, and the lubrication system. A rotating screen prevents harmful foreign matter from entering the path of cooling air and serves as a cutting device for any grasses or weeds discharged from a lawnmower, lawn mowing application. The rotating screen also serves as a cutting device for any grass or weeds discharged from a lawn mowing application. Grass blown by the wind or the discharge of a mower deck encounters the small holes in the rotating screen. If the grass passes through the holes, it is chopped into smaller pieces. This reduces the size of the debris to make it easier for the cooling air to flow to eject debris past the cooling fins of the engine. Cooling fins with different sizes and spacings on a flywheel reduce overall engine noise by alternating the sound frequency of driven air. Most Briggs and Stratton engines feature a phase modulated cooling fin. A phase modulated cooling fin is a cooling fan that has blades spaced at different distances from each other. Phase modulated cooling fans and cooling fins on flywheels reduce noise by alternating the frequency of the sound of driven air. Air driven by a cooling fan or by cooling fins on a flywheel is a significant contributor to the overall sound produced by a small air-cooled engine. Fully ducted engines provide cooling air using sheet metal air guides and a sealed blower housing. Partially ducted engines provide cooling air using a blower housing and ambient airflow. Engine ducting is required when the application requires more control of cooling air. Some applications require a fully ducted or partially ducted engine. A fully ducted engine is an air-cooled engine in which cooling airflow, routing, and rate are controlled by air guides and a sealed blower housing. A partially ducted engine is an air-cooled engine in which cooling air is provided by the blower housing and ambient airflow. A plenum provides a specific path for the cooling air to enter the engine cooling system without mixing with hot or surrounding uh, hot air surrounding the engine. A cooling air plenum is a duct made from sheet metal, plastic, or similar materials that provides a specific path for the cooling air to enter the engine cooling system. A cooling air plenum is required when the airflow source and or direction are not sufficient to meet engine cooling needs. The cooling air plenum draws cooling air from the outside of the engine enclosure through a duct to prevent cooling air from mixing with hot air surrounding the engine for maximum engine efficiency. A cooling air discharge duct routes hot air away from the engine compartment to avoid overheating. Cooling air discharge from the engine is collected and routed out of the engine enclosure to avoid overheating the engine compartment. A cooling air discharge duct captures all the hot air passing by the cooling fins of an air-cooled engine. The cooling air discharge duct must have sufficient cross-section to prevent hot air to flow without restriction. The cross-sectional size requirement of the cooling air discharge duct is the same as the requirement for the cooling air intake duct. A liquid cool engine cooling system continuously circulates coolant throughout the engine to remove heat from the engine block and cylinder head. Accumulated engine heat in the coolant is released into the cooling air at the radiator. Coolant is circulated through the engine block and cylinder head at relatively low pressures. Liquid cool engine cooling system components commonly include a radiator, radiator cooling fan, water pump, and thermostat. 
These components are connected to each other using special high temperature rubber hoses and fittings. A water pump is a belt driven centrifugal pump that moves coolant through the passages of a liquid cooling system. A radiator is a multi-channeled container that allows air to pass around the channels to remove heat from the liquid within. Thin metal fins on the radiator channels increase the amount of surface area in contact with cooling air to improve heat transfer efficiency from the coolant in the radiator. An inlet and outlet on the radiator allow the passage of coolant to and from the engine. Hotter coolant from the engine flows in the radiator through the top inlet. Cooler coolant from the radi radiator flows to the engine through the bottom inlet. The radiator also serves as a coolant reservoir by storing coolant in the top tank and bottom tank. The valve in the thermostat regulates coolant flow by opening and closing to maintain the desired engine temperature and to reduce the engine warm-up period. When the engine is started, the water pump circulates coolant throughout the engine block and cylinder head through a bypass hose that typically connects the intake manifold or cylinder head to the water pump. With the thermostat closed, the coolant in the engine block picks up heat from the engine. The coolant in the radiator remains in place until the coolant temperature in the engine block reaches 130 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. The increase in temperature causes wax in the wax-filled cylinder to expand to open the valve in the thermostat. This allows coolant to flow from the water pump through the cylinder block and cylinder head and back to the radiator. The thermostat return spring applies pressure to close the valve when the coolant has cooled. The thermostat valve regulates coolant flow by opening and closing to maintain the desired temperature in the cooling system. Normal operating temperatures may vary with engine design and commonly range from 175 to 195 degrees Fahrenheit. Asperities worn off by friction provide a series of plateaus and valleys for bearing surfaces and lubricant reservoirs. All bearing surfaces in an internal combustion engine are susceptible to friction. An integrally machined aluminum bearing surface of a connecting rod, crankcase cover, sump, or cylinder block has a smooth, shiny surface. However, viewing this surface under a microscope re reveals asperities. Asperities are tiny projections from the machining process which produce surface roughness or unevenness. Under a microscope, asperities resemble a series of mountain peaks and valleys. Oil recommendations for small air-cooled engines are a compromise between the required oil flow at low temperatures and adequate protection at high ambient and or operating temperatures. The SAE assigns a viscosity rating number to engine oil. The SAE viscosity rating is a number based on the volume of a base oil that flows through a specific orifice at a specific specified temperature, atmospheric pressure, and time period. A high viscosity rating results from a small volume of oil flowing through the orifice caused by high resistance to flow. A low viscosity rating results from a large volume of oil, oil flowing through the orifice caused by low resistance to flow. The higher the viscosity rating number, the thicker the oil. The viscosity rating number assigned to an oil does not change, but oil viscosity can change with temperature and ambient pressure. The viscosity rating number or weight for use in internal combustion engines ranges from SAE 10 to SAE 50. Oils recommended for small air-cooled engines are based on the ambient operating temperature range anticipated before the next oil change. The API provides standards that indicate the performance level and quality of engine oil. The EOLCS program is designed to define, certify, and monitor engine oil performance deemed necessary for satisfactory equipment life and performance. API license marketers may display the API service symbol and the API certification mark for use by the consumer. 
The API service symbol indicates oil performance level, oil viscosity, and energy conserving properties. Oil performance is indicated by service categories for gasoline and diesel engines. The letter S indicates an oil suitable for gasoline engines. The letter C indicates an oil suitable for diesel engines. Use the multi-viscosity oil such as SAE 10W40 above 40 degrees Fahrenheit may result in high oil consumption and require more frequent checking than SAE 30. Air-cooled small engines operate hotter than liquid-cooled or automobile engines. Use a multi-viscosity oil such as SAE 10W30 at or above 40 degrees Fahrenheit results in high oil consumption and possible engine damage. The oil level should be checked more frequently if multi-viscosity oil is used. Use of SAE 30 oil below 40 degrees Fahrenheit can resist and result in hard starting and possible cylinder damage from inadequate startup lubrication. A dipper and slinger are splash lubrication system components that direct oil to moving parts with a splashing motion. A splash lubrication system is an engine lubrication system in which oil is directed to moving parts by a splashing motion. Splash lubrication systems are simple in design and are commonly used on horizontal and vertical shaft engines. Oil is directed to bearing surfaces with a dipper or slinger. A dipper is an engine component attached to the connecting rod, which directs oil from the oil reservoir to bearing surfaces. The dipper enters and exits the oil reservoir as the piston travels to and from bottom dead center to splash and distribute oil throughout the crankcase. A pressure filtration lubrication system uses a Gerotor oil pump to circulate oil to a limited area of an engine. A pressure lubri filtration lubrication system is an engine lubrication system in which a pump is used to circulate oil in a limited area of the engine. Oil is directed to bearing surfaces by a Gerotor, a Gerotor oil pump used in conjunction with a slinger to provide the necessary lubrication to the engine. A Gerotor oil pump is an oil pump that consists of a multi-lobed inner rotor meshing with an outer rotor to discharge oil under pressure. The Gerotor oil pump inner rotor contains four to six lobes at the circumference. The outer rotor has one more lobe space than the inner rotor. The Gerotor oil pump body has a passageway that connects to the oil reservoir. The inner rotor is rotated by the pump shaft without any radial or axial motion. As the inner rotor is rotated, the outer rotor rotates from the meshing of the lobes. A low pressure area or vacuum is created within the pump body near the passageway to the oil reservoir from the extra lobe on the outer gear during rotation. A groove in the cover commonly houses an o-ring or gasket to seal the pump body. The oil filter traps dirt, metal, particles, carbon, and other foreign matter from the oil reservoir in a pleated paper filtering material from the oil drawn from the oil reservoir. Pressure filtration systems are used on engines and applications where it is desirable to filter the oil. The primary function of the Gerotor oil pump is to move oil from the oil reservoir through the oil filter and return it to the oil reservoir. The oil filter contains a pleated paper filtering material to trap dirt, metal particles, carbon, and other foreign matter from the oil drawn from the oil reservoir. A rubber sealing gasket provides a positive seal to prevent leakage. A spring-loaded bypass valve opens if the oil cannot pass through a clogged filter. This allows oils to, oil to continue to be routed through lubrication passages. A pressure lubrication system circulates oil to all bearing surfaces throughout the engine. A pressure lubrication system is an engine lubrication system in which a pump is used as the primary component to circulate oil through the entire engine. This type of lubrication system provides consistent pressure and volume of oil to all bearing surfaces in the engine. A malfunction in the pressure lubrication system causes a disruption of oil 
to the engine components and can result in severe damage to the engine. A pressure lubrication system consists of a derotor oil pump, a pickup screen, an oil filter, and oil passages throughout the engine. An oil pressure relief valve uses a spring and check ball to regulate oil pressure in a pressure lubrication system. Oil pressure produced by the oil pump in a pressure lubrication system is regulated by an oil pressure relief valve consisting of a spring, check ball, and dump orifice. As oil pressure builds in the system, the spring and check ball move with a cylinder machined into the pump body. When the oil pressure overcomes the spring pressure, the check ball moves to uncover a dump orifice to allow some oil to return to the oil reservoir. As the oil is discharged into the oil reservoir, oil pressure decreases. The pressure decreases is proportional to the size of the orifice and flow of oil. In normal operation of a pressure lubrication system, pressure is regulated whenever the engine is operating. The Briggs & Stratton oil guard system prevents engine damage from a low oil level condition in the engine. Some engines are equipped with a low oil level warning system to alert the operator to a low oil level condition in the engine. For example, the Briggs & Stratton oil guard system prevents an engine damage by shutting down an engine operating with insufficient oil. The oil guard system also shuts down the engine if the angle of operation causes a low oil level condition. An oil guard can be a float type or spark, type, spark gap type system. In a float type oil guard system, a float connected to a switch is inserted into the oil reservoir of the crankcase. When oil is at the correct level, the float is in a raised position to open the switch. When the oil level drops below the minimum recommended oil level, the float drops to close the switch. The closed switch completes a circuit from the primary windings of the ignition coil through the oil sensor. This causes the warning light to flash and direct primary ignition voltage to ground to stop the engine. The engine cannot be started until the oil level is restored to the correct level. Maintenance schedules detail maintenance operations and intervals for optimal engine performance. Cooling and lubrication system service procedures commonly performed include checking the oil, changing the oil and oil filter, and removing debris. The oil and oil filter should be changed according to the application manufacturer's recommendations. On air-cooled engines, debris may pass through the rotating screen and become lodged between the cooling fins. This can reduce the cooling capacity of the engine and cause overheating. Cooling fins should be cleaned every 100 hours of engine operation. On liquid-cooled engines, the coolant and fan belt should be checked and changed as required. Maintenance schedules provided by the manufacturer detail specific maintenance operations. Service should be performed more frequently if the engine is operated in dirty or dusty conditions, under heavy load, or in high ambient temperatures. 